the Minneapolis Convention Center. The roar you hear, the crowd that has a predilection for the Predator, Matt the Predator Vanda. And the thump and roar of the Harley Davidson choppers that blast in the background with every ring entrance he makes. He's from East St. Paul, Minnesota. Matt says that's Harley country. in the biggest step up of his career. It's time for our main event. Time for two vastly different career paths to cross. Sam Gar is entering his 12th year dealing with boxing's ups and downs. Fortunately for this former welterweight title challenger, there have been more ups, but not recently. His last fight was nine months ago, and it was supposed to be a bounce-back win. Instead, undefeated prospect Ishe Smith almost bounced Gar out, outworking for the duration of the 10 rounds. It was Gar's second straight loss. Now well-rested, the 34-year-old sees a different outcome tonight. Gar and victory. That's the only thing I see is victory. Whether it be uh, a 10-round decision or first-round knockout, whichever comes, I'll be glad, but I will earn this victory. Gar will be opposite East St. Paul's Matt Vanda. The 25-year-old Vanda revels in the company of biker buddies, sports numerous tattoos, and always gives the local fans what they want. That's what he did in September of 2002. It was an exciting and very close fight with Jesus Valverde. Vanda was able to keep on pressing forward for a win. He sees himself as much an entertainer as a prospect. The crowd wants to ha have some fun, and they want to... It's just more like an event, you know? I got to entertain the, the people, let them have a good time. Can't have a boring fight, you know? And then boring before the fight, I had to get them all charged up. When the bikes fire up, everybody gets up. The question is, can he please the fans against a refreshed Sam Gar? The veteran Gar is supremely confident, but Vanda has a game plan he's willing to share. Well, I see me uh, out boxing them, jabbing a lot, hitting them every time, pretty much. and. Uh, you know, going in the late rounds, I see me hitting him with a good right hand and left hook and knocking him out. To be honest, he's going to be the underdog in this fight. He, he hasn't had the experience. He hasn't been in, in the ring with the people I've been with. He doesn't have the knowledge that I have as far as in the ring. And whatever type of sparring he did to try to prepare for something like this is never, it's not going to match actual competition. So I feel very comfortable and confident, you know, in, in, in my, what I'm going to do tonight. For such a great sports town, it's been a long time since they've had a scene like this in the Twin Cities. A local favorite in the ring in a nationally televised main event. They are hyped up for Matt Vanda. Here is Sam Bam Bam Gar at 34, nine years older than Matt Vanda, four years removed from his fight against then-champ James Page. Gar, 32 and seven with 28 knockouts. His last five, it was preceded by a loss to Gary Jones. Since then, you see the three and two record. Chris Smith and Ishe Smith both on the way up and maybe indicators of where Gar currently is. Here's Teddy Atlas on what to expect from Sam Gar. Teddy? Well, for Sam, number one, don't be lazy. You're a terrific counterpuncher, but other times you tend to wait too long and lose control of the action. Keep your work rate up. Number two, nail him coming. You're very good at timing guys when they come in. Let your shots go and catch him as he's throwing shots walking in. And finally, number three, jabs and body work. The jab will control him and his movement and keep you from only looking for counter shots. And the body work will hurt him and take away his legs. And here is 5'10", 153-pound Matt Panda. 29-0, 20 knockouts. His last five doesn't have any of those step-up fights. Did overcome some challenges during the stretch. Had a closed left eye against Jesus Valverde. You see the two fights there against Valverde. And a broken left hand in the win over Homer Gibbons. Teddy, what should we expect from Vanda? Well, Vanda's going to keep all these people happy and stay undefeated. Take advantage of dead spots. When God goes defensive in spots, get off combinations, then get out. Make the most of these times when he lets you work. And number two, don't walk straight in. 
Gara's a good counter puncher. We just talked about it. So don't just walk into the trap. Use your legs to give angles and keep him off balance. And finally, don't lay off the rope. Lay on the rope. Off the ropes. Don't lay in front. Gar needs to be set to work. So don't lay in one spot too long in front of him. That means not laying on the ropes, not laying too long in front. Ron Stander, the old heavyweights, the referee, it's scheduled Damn. for 10 yeah. rounds. Yeah. All right, fellas, look here. We went over the rules in the dressing room. Now I'm going to warn you again. Watch your heads inside. Keep them up above here. Conduct yourselves like champions. And above all, obey my orders at all times. Touch them up and let's go to work. The ring experience between Sam Gar and Matt Vanda. You see the age difference, four more years as a pro for Gar. And of course, Gar had those 12 championship rounds against Page. Teddy, almost a uh, Joe Macy-esque reaction here in the Twin Cities for Matt Vanda getting that hometown feel that we've seen up in Buffalo. But you know, it's good for the game when a community can rally behind a local boxer. It is. It's good buzz. Makes a different atmosphere, a different feel. feel. It's electric. It's a promoter's delight. We need more of these areas, more of these places where you can really draw the fans. You said Joe Macy up in Buffalo. He draws them. Not too many people draw big here. But now the trick, the people are in the seats already. That's done. Fans has got to find a way to beat the best fighter he's been in the ring with. Big step up for him with Sam Gar. He better be careful, Vander, that he doesn't walk into a counter shot, especially right in front. I think he should come in on angles because he comes right in front. Gar's set to punch. He can bang a little bit, and he can time you, and he will time you, and he will bang you. He loves to counter Gar. Shortcomings of Gar, not busy enough. You can add hustle, and that's what Vander's looking to do. You can outwork him. Sometimes you're too lazy, sometimes you wait for the perfect shot. Too much. It's great that you don't waste nothing like Gar, uh, but if you wait too long, you can lose decisions. That's been the rap against him. Gar coming off two straight losses. Both the well-regarded prospects, Chris Smith, Ishay Smith. Ishay came up with a win last night against Randall Bailey as he continues with an unbeaten record. So for Matt Vanda, he thinks this is a litmus test of sorts to see where he ranks among those prospects. If you can imagine, Matt Vanda is a very good friend of a tattoo artist. He has a buddy who puts a tattoo on his body for every win that he earns. I believe he gets that tattoo, but I was told for every win that he earns by knockout. Well, he better do one of two things. He better start boxing more. He better throw a little bit more because there's not going to be much more room if he keeps scoring KOs and getting those free tattoos on his body. He tries to come in with a left hook. He's got to pick his spots here, Vanda. Use his legs. Use his quickness. Use his youth a little bit. But not be reckless with that youth. Not come in from too far away. Don't walk into a counter. And Gar's looking for that right-hand counter. If Vander throws that left hook from a little too far away, gets a little anxious with this crowd, that can hurt him. You know, a great crowd here, it can hurt you too. It can really rise you up when you need it, but it can make you reckless if you try to satisfy it. Also, when you gotta stay here before the fight, people don't think of that much, but you gotta stay here the weeks before the fight or the days before. A lot of phone calls, a lot of requests for tickets. That can take away your concentration. Gar's gonna take advantage of all of that. There's the local favorite, Matt Vanda, the unbeaten fighter from St. Paul, fighting now in Minneapolis in what is being termed as a graduation of sorts, a step-up fight against former title contender Sam Gar. For fans, and they're the best in the world back home, something to maybe look for. Gar, smart and wily, but he's got a defensive habit of slipping to his right, Joe, and laying on his right. And when you lay on your right, you can be vulnerable to that right hand. Look for right hand leads, and Vanda picks up on it. Just watch Gar. He'll make his final pit stop on the right side. And when you're over there, you can leave yourself wide open for right hand. You need to be on the left where you're outside the right hand. 
On the other side, you alluded to Vanda being concerned with guard countering. He told us yesterday the only concern he has is Sam Gar's right hand. So some strategy to watch tonight between these two. And all Vanda has to worry about is don't throw that left hook from too far away to give that right hand an opening, and don't be lazy with the jab. And again, work your way in. Bring your legs, come behind your jab with your Vanda. Don't reach it. Don't get all anxious with this crowd. That'll fit right in to what God wants, an opening for a counter shot. Vanda's a younger one. Wants to keep a fast pace with the 34-year-old guard. Stay ahead, because guard doesn't always work a lot. Stay ahead. Maybe wear him down if he's getting a little old. But it's a catch-22 with that. You got to be careful with that faster pace. You don't want it to be a reckless pace. You want it to be smart. Not all anxious. Not reckless. Not thrown from too far away. Where you allow guard to get opportunities to pop you in between something fat and something over anxious. Looping shot comes in and lands. Sometimes guard a little lazy with that jab. He uses it as a measuring stick, Joe. Not so much as a weapon to snap your head back, but just to measure you. Look at him. He pauses with that jab a little bit sometimes. That can be dangerous. A jab is a great weapon, but if you pour with it, it can leave it a hole for a right-hand counter by Vanda. You want to snap that jab like you're testing hot water. You don't want to leave it out there slow. Gar scored with the jab, came in with a right hand to the top of the head. Not a fast pace so far. Gar's got to be happy with that. I would think so. Good round for Gar. He's been able to have his tempo pick his spot. Get a little control. And maybe quiet this crowd. ESPN2 Friday Night Fights presented by Miller Lite. Grab yourself a great tasting low carb Miller Lite. And by the neighborhood built by MCI. Unlimited local and long distance for one low monthly price. Downtown Minneapolis, the bright lights on this winter night. They heat it up inside the Minneapolis Convention Center where this crowd wants to see their guy, Matt Vanda, the undefeated junior middleweight from St. Paul. Get to work against Sam Gar. You see the punches in round two, and a really good round for Sam Gar, Teddy. 26 out of 70, 37 percent. Vanda only able to land nine. You know, when you have an undefeated prospect like they have in Vanda, when you get to this point in your career, you're 29 and 0, you're, you're up there, you start looking for spots. Spots that's going to step you up a little bit, get you more respect, move you up in the ratings, get you closer to a big fight, and help you learn. But you look for that spot carefully. You usually look for a veteran that you think maybe a little bit on the other side of his career, or maybe a style that you think you have an advantage over. Well, Vanda's people think that God is a little bit long in the tooth. We're going to find out if they pick right here or if they made the right mistake. Two fights ago, Gar was stopped by Chris Smith from New York, who was undefeated. Now, Gar came in really light in that fight, 145 pounds. That was the lightest of his career. I don't know if Gar was a little overtrained in that fight, but he looked used up. He looked a little old in that fight. Maybe fans and people were looking at that fight, and maybe, maybe they were wrong. We'll find out. Crowd reacting to Vanda coming forward and putting his punches together, but Gar was right there to return fire. Gar has moved his weight up. In that fight that he looked worn out with Chris Smith, 145 pounds, tonight 150 and a half pounds. He looks stronger. So far, he doesn't look real. He looks like Sam Gar, a guy who's careful, a guy who's deliberate, a guy who does that. Counters you with a left hook when you reach in. The more polished Sam Gar, who's been in with better opposition, taking advantage of the opportunity here in round number three, opened up by Matt Vanda. Vanda has a problem now. See, Vanda, he's a busy guy. He's not more experienced. He's not more talented than Gar. He's not as good a puncher, even though his record is good. That is more against the opposition, Vanda's point, than an indication of real power. So Vanda has to be busy 
the out busy guys, the out tough guys. He uses this crowd. That's just a push right there. He uses this crowd. But right now, he's not able to be real busy because God got him thinking a little bit and worrying a little bit about walking into a counter. And that's what God wants. He wants to make Ben the worry a little bit so he can keep it at a pace that's more suitable for the 34-year-old than it is for the 25-year-old. Bender seems to be picking it up a little bit at the end of this round. It's up to God to make him pay a price as he comes in. He did earlier. Good main event between Sam Gar and Matt Banda. One look at Matt Banda, and you ask the question, what's up with the tattoos? Well, here he is, and in his own words. Well, one of my best friends does tattoos, and my mom brought me to, uh, actually, he did all my tattoos except one. My mom brought me to get a tattoo for my 15th birthday. I begged her, and I got the Notre Dame fight and Irish guy on my left shoulder. And then uh, one of my best friends does tattoos, and he just kind of made, we made a deal when I was young, I don't know, 16. He said, you just keep knocking people out, and I'll give you free tattoos. <laughs> so I took advantage of it, and I got a lot of tattoos. And I, I guess, I mean, they all have a little bit of a meaning, but the only ones that really got a meaning is I got my mom's name on my stomach, and that's just for my mama. Otherwise, they're all just a work of art, beautiful art. Well, and here's the latest piece of artwork. You just saw a glimpse of it right there on the right leg. The flames of fire coming out of his socks there. He says, you know what? I'm going to be fast like a bat out of hell. It's going to give me some speed in this fight. Whatever works for you, Matt. So far, it's been Sam Gard getting to work. Once again, outlanding Vanda in that third round. 20 to 13 edge. Good counterpunch halfway through that round. That was the signature of that third round for Gar. You see the power punches, 27 out of 55. He's at 47%, very efficient effort from the veteran Sam Gar against the undefeated Matt Vanda. There's been class of fight for Vanda from what he's been fighting. Gar has fought so many good fighters, as we said. For the top prize, the welterweight title. Teddy Atlas's scorecard, 30 to 28, in favor of Sam Gar. You know, it's a funny thing here. Vander has to be busy. As I said, he's not the bigger puncher here, I don't believe, at least. He's not the more experienced guy. He hasn't been in with this kind of opposition. We know those things already. He's got to be busy. He's got to find a way to be busy and at the same time not be reckless. And God's got what he wants. This is where he encounter a slow enough pace where at 34 years of old age, he can feel good about the way this fight's going. He can pick a spot, not be overcome by the sheer numbers of a 25-year-old man. And again, if... And that's it, if Vanda's people were picking Gar because they thought he was shot for They thought he was shot. So far, not the case. And one of the reasons that may be, Teddy, is the fact that Sam Gar is a refreshed fighter. He took nine months off after the loss to Ishe Smith, and he feels very comfortable with the shape he's in. And it may have served those legs well. It does serve older fighters well. Young fighters, no. They lose a little bit of their mindset, a little of their confidence sometimes. They start to say, gee, I wasn't after. I'm not going to be as good. They may lose some of their time. But an old timer like Gar, it's a good thing to get a little rest. He's got the rounds under his belt already. He got to hit a right hand a little earlier because he laid on the right side. Look for that. He lays on the right. Open for right hand from Vandal. There's a low blow as the left hand way south of the border. And Vanda being a gentleman, not following up, stopping. Okay. And putting his glove out and apologizing. All right, baby, 10 seconds, come on. Just about four rounds in the books here. Friday night fights, round number five of our main event. Sam Gard taking on the unbeaten local favorite here in Minneapolis, Matt Vanda.
punches in round four. Another edge for Sam Gar, 24 to 12, Teddy. Sam Gar is getting the landscape, getting the pace that he wants. So far, and the fight's far from over, but so far, he's won in a small battle. He's taken away maybe Vance's strongest suit. The ability and the attitude to throw a lot of punches, to be real busy. He's made Van to worry about that. He's made him be thoughtful. Van doesn't want to be real thoughtful in that way. He wants to be careful not leave himself open, but he still wants to be able to be busy. That is really what gets him wins. That is what's gotten him here so far. He's got to find a way to get back to where he can be busy, but at the same time, not have to worry about feeding into the counterpunching ability of God, not throw from too far away. God gets Vander to watch his punch count and to cut down, as he's done so far in his punch count, well, God's gotten what he wanted. There's a confidence about Sam Gar that has developed in this fight against Vanda. And the recent rap on him has been he's been tentative and hesitant and outworked in many spots in recent fights. That has not been the case at all just about halfway through this fight. See, one thing that Vanda and his people are going to probably have to help him with a little bit is once he does get in, his biggest danger is getting in. Because that's where he can walk into some counter shots from the experienced guard. But once he's inside, he's got to use his youth, then he's got to get busy and get that punch count up and take advantage. Because he's okay once he's inside. Once he's inside, he's got to work. But he's not working quite enough when he gets there. Because we can see already, he's, he's going to be a little bit troubled on the outside about how to get in. So once he does get there, he's got to make hay a little bit. He's got to make the most of it. Make up for those spots outside where maybe he's not getting what he wants. Ten-round junior middleweight fight. Sam Gar and the unbeaten Matt Vanda from the convention center in Minneapolis. Joe Tessitore and Teddy Atlas with you. The crowd was rocking early on. Now here in the fifth round of the scheduled ten-rounder, I think they realize what their hometown hero is in store for tonight. A challenging fight against the former title challenger who is up to the task. Paul's getting what he wants. There's Matt Vanda. Got involved with drugs as a teenager. Had to serve a couple years in a juvenile correctional facility here in Minnesota. Turned his life around, and boxing was a big part of that. But here, in a tough fight against Sam Gar, he hopes that his career doesn't turn around with a 180 and head in the other direction. He's 29-0, but most of that came against somewhat limited opposition. The punches through round five, 105 to 56 edge for the veteran Sam Gar. As long as there's distance, it's good for Gar for a couple reasons. He has room to launch a counter shot and to launch a right hand like he just did. And if there's distance, it means there's detachment, there's separation. That means that the young guy's not on you. That means the pace is going slow. That means you're in business at 34 years of age. Teddy's scorecard, 50 to 47. You know, Joe, as we get to the midway point, there's three questions I have to ask that, to me, are the most important elements of this fight. Can Gar keep the pace? Keep the fight going the way it's going right now. Where he's got separation, he's got it his way. Can Vander find a way to get busy? He's not the puncher, we see that. Even though his record indicated that, we knew it was a different class of fighter now. He's in with a more experienced guy. Can he find a way, without leaving himself vulnerable, can he find a way to get those punch numbers up that he has to get up to make up for the difference in class of this fight? And the third question, maybe the most important, if this goes to the scorecard, can God get a fair shake here in Minneapolis with all those people in those seats backing Vander, the hometown kid? In a state where there is no longer a boxing commission, Ted. You know, 
wish you didn't mention that because well i that's did another, so that's another take problem. it that's why we need a national commission but you're right no commission here although somebody was sent from colorado from abc but no commission here but there's television here there's witnesses out there and right now there's the left hand and the right hand of golf and you know you mentioned earlier Joe, the referee the old heavyweight referee in that ring, Ron Stander. Boy, what a tough son of a gun he was. Poor Joe Frazier for the title back in 71. What a chin he had. Didn't move his head much, but boy, oh boy, did he have heart. The crowd having a slight burst as Vanda was able to land a punch on the ropes. Far and few between, though, for the local hero. Four-year-old Sam Gar stepping out for the seventh round against the unbeaten Matt Vanda. There has not been a round through six rounds of this scheduled ten-rounder in which Sam Gar has not outlanded Matt Vanda. But here's what Vanda wants to do, Teddy. Well, that's what he's got to do. When he gets inside, you know, you, you take the risk coming in. That's where you take the risk. Once you get past that risk, you have to make the most of it. And so far... Vanda hasn't done that enough on a consistent basis. He's not going to win, at least on our scorecards. He's not going to win laying outside, keeping a slow pace with the more experienced golf. Now the pace is picking up. Let's see if Vanda can build on it, keep it going. There is blood now coming from the nose of Sam Gar. That's from a shot that landed in the opening moments of this seventh round. You want a fast pace if you're a fan of the seven weeks. First of all, that's what you do. You punch a lot. That's your strength. It's not a lot of other areas. You have a big strength. That is your identity. That's what carries you. Also, you have a guy in front of you who's not the busiest guy. You want to outwork him. And you got a guy who's 34. If he's going to get tired, he's going to be in the late rounds, and he's going to be fast. A fast pace. Now you see Gar being smart there, tying up. Vander not being smart, allowing himself to be tied up. Vander just missed, but more importantly, he could have got counted, and he gets caught a right hand there. Vander has to be careful. When he works those hands, he's got to be in the right position, in close, like he is now. Now he should work, but not from far away. Not there, he's pouring out again, and that gives room and for that, for the right hand, and he's hurt a little bit. Then the guy's checking up, and he's got a heart, and he comes right back. Good scoring by both men, and a right hand lands from oh, Gar. Well, when you got he's all fighting. these people in one place, you should have an electric fight to go with the atmosphere, and we're getting that right now. Again, Gar resting inside, Vanda letting him. And it may be an attitude of the age now in the seventh round of Sam Gar. You know, this and could, the tenaciousness, really, of Vanda. This could be a round that you could put a little check mark near your scorecard to see how it's scored at the end of the fight, if it's controversial. Because Vanda's been thrown a lot, but Gar landed a lot of clean shots. I like the workload of Sam Gar here, finally, in the seventh round. Work! Work! Got a good fight here, sliding in the bottom right hand corner. You're gonna find out what God's been doing. The last round, he got a little separation, a little room. When he gets room, that right hand can land, and it landed well. And that's gonna be the telling of that last round on the scorecards. Are the judges, are the home judges of Minneapolis gonna go for the cleaner punches that we think the God landed, or are they gonna go with the fact that Vander picked up the work rate in that round and was busier? Well, let's get a peek at Teddy Atlas's scorecard through seven rounds. 70 to 65 for Sam Gar. As we alluded to, though, it could be very, very different with the three gentlemen sitting ringside. Do you have those helmets? <laughs> a lot of people here. If the hometown kid going, doesn't get the nod, you don't know how the crowd will react. 
See the copy box numbers there in that seventh round, heavily favoring Sam Gar. We talked about the referee, the local ref, Ron Stato, who's a tough heavyweight. A couple good fighters from this area. Jason Lizal, the undefeated lightweight from this area. Exciting looking kid. We've had him on our air. Anthony Bonsanti. We've had him on air when he knocked out Tony Ayala. He's also a junior middleweight. Him and his people have been calling for a match with Vanda. Well, Vanda's got to get past Gar first. All Minnesota junior middleweight clash that would be. You would think that would fill some seats. I'll tell you, Jason Litzow is a uh, nice young power punching prospect that we thought a lot of when we saw him back in September. Yes, he is. He's exciting. He's got a good amateur background. He's tall for that weight. But once again, God getting the pace he wants. Not fast. Once you see distance, you know God's in business because it must be a good pace for him. He can do that. He can stay outside, keep it slow, and then jump in when he wants. Jumped in and landed a left hand. This is not the pace that's good for Vanda. There have been very few times tonight, Teddy, where Vanda has been able to solve that problem. And that is a problem for Vanda because Vanda's worried about walking in. He's worried that if he's himself and he just throws punches, tonight could be a difference. He can walk into a big shot from a better fighter than he's been in the ring with before, who's good at counterpunch. And well, in that second him, round, and in the third round, when a couple of counter right hands came in, it was a good early statement by Gar. It was. That may have set him up very well for these middle rounds. Very important, and not by any mistake, Joe, by the veteran. He wanted to show the younger guy, hey, you got something to worry about. Don't be too fast tonight. Friday night fights from a jam-packed Minneapolis Convention Center. Ten-round junior middleweights between Sam Gar, the former title challenger at welterweight, and the unbeaten Matt Vanda. Teddy Atlas's scorecard, now a commanding lead for Sam Gar, 80 to 74. Teddy, I fully agree with you on this, that Sam Gar has controlled the action and is well ahead on the scorecard. He was knocked out in February of 2003. That may be exactly what Matt Vanda needs at this point. Well, one thing Vanda and his people haven't gotten is a completely worn out Gar, who looked that way two fights ago against Christopher Smith, the undefeated prospect from New York, when Gar came in the lightest weight of his career. If they were barking on that, Gar, they made a mistake. We're going to find out if they're going to pay for it on the judges' scorecards. Now that we're coming close to the home stretch here, we should probably touch on why we're concerned, besides just the natural concern of being in somebody's hometown when they sell a lot of tickets that they opponent might not get the fair nod. There's been a lot of guys that have complained about some funny stuff when it comes to Band in some of his fights where they have said that referees have favored Vanda before when it's been a tough fight where they've taken points away when they've broken the action up when they've done stuff that opponents and other boxing people have thought were unfair and favoring the hometown kid and there's always the factor of how much does the crowd play on the minds of the judges. There have been moments in this fight where Vanda has gotten off, has fired a series of shots, and the crowd has reacted. But the consistent work, as you see here in round number nine, all night long in controlling the range, the pace, and thoroughly outworking them has been by Sam Gar as Vanda once again presses forward. There has not been a round through eight rounds in which Gar hasn't landed more total punches according to CompuBox. At least in my humble opinion, Vanda's got to pick it up now. He's losing his round so far. He's got to pick it up now. It might be too late, but who knows how the judges have it here, the hometown judges have it here. But he's got to pick it up. Got to pick up that work rate. He's not slicker than God. He's not more experienced than God. He's not a better puncher than God. He's got to work harder than God. He hasn't been able to find a way to do that so far. And right now, I know he doesn't want to walk into things, and that's why he's been a little tentative. But right now, to get that work number off, that work rate off, he's got to take chances, I believe. If he's going to stay undefeated, at least on our scorecard, he's got to take chances now. 
Pretty good main event. Very entertaining and a big crowd here in Minnesota. Next week, we can guarantee a sellout as promoter Jimmy Birchfield makes the rematch between Scott Pemberton and Omar Sheikha. You remember July 25th, 2003. It was our ESPN Fight of the Year. Sheikha dropped Pemberton in the second round, and in those middle rounds, the 36-year-old Sandman returned fire before almost being out on his feet in the 11th round, and an unbelievable 12th round finish that had us all waiting to hear the word. Who would win this dramatic super middleweight clash? Sheikha wasn't happy. The Sandman victorious. The rematch next Friday. Teddy, you gotta be real excited about that. I'm looking forward to it. And there's one of the judges in the fight. And everybody right now has to have two eyes in this fight. One the action in the ring. One the pencils outside. Well, if the crowd could step up and work it for Matt Vanda, they'd be happy to. But he's got to do it on his own in this 10th and final round against Sam Gar. You see the punches landed. Gar, a commanding 221 to 114. He has led in every single round. See, I like the fact that Vanda came in here knowing he stepped up in class, took that chance, knew he was stepping up in class. And he knew he couldn't be as reckless as he'd been in the past. He had to be a little bit more contained, thoughtful with the kind of punches and where those punches were coming from because he was in there with a good counterpunch. But he still had to find a way to be busy. That was his strong suit. He hasn't been able to do the two things. Not leave himself open, not leave himself reckless, but at the same time still be what he needs to be, a busy fighter. And he hasn't been able to do that, at least in my eyes. Not enough. And Teddy, if he must have a knockout here, you look down at his record and you see the 20 knockouts in 29 wins. But truth be told, he is not a big power puncher, Matt Vanda. Well, truth be told, we, we said that earlier, you're right. Yeah. Level of opposition and the fact that he just throws everything at many of his opponents is why the 20 knockouts exist. Sometimes the knockouts are indicative of physical power. Sometimes they're indicative of the kind of guys you've been fighting. And Gar more lands indicative of that. a right hand. Again, even in what you would think would be a desperate time for Vanda, he's not picking up the work rate the way I think he needs to and the way he has in the past. Of course, with lesser fighters. And once again, when he doesn't get inside, Vanda, that's when he really needs to work, Joe. Right there, see this is, that, to me, that's the telling of the fight. When he gets in there close, he didn't work. And now God's the one working. You don't blame God, the 34-year-old experienced guy, for tying up on the inside, because he's getting his way on the outside. But you gotta frown down on Vander, the younger guy who hasn't done well on the outside, and when he gets close, he doesn't do what he needs to do. Once again, Vander not punching inside. I think this would be, wouldn't be the first time, unfortunately in this prison, not the last time, but I think it would be a damn shame if you took his effort away from God on the scorecards. A very consistent effort from Sam Gar. Last-ditch hope for Vanda. He never solved it, folks. But who knows? Sam Gar coming off two straight losses to prize prospects. Matt Vanda, 29-0 for the moment. We will get the official decision when we come back to the Twin Cities. ESPN2 Friday Night Fights, presented by Miller Lite. Grab yourself a great-tasting, low-carb Miller Lite. Big fight night in Minneapolis. They haven't had one of these in a long time, and a good crowd came out to see this guy, Matt Vanda. 254 to 144, a huge edge for Sam Gar, according to CompuBox. Teddy Atlas's scorecard. 100 to 92, I had it 99, 91.
The man who knows the official decision is Jeff Conner. Ladies and gentlemen, at the end of the snowball, give them both a big round of applause for a fabulous fight. Judge Jack Hayden scores the bout 97-93, Vanda. Judge Vern Sweeney scores the bout 97-95, Gar. Judge Butch Anderson scores about 97-95 for the winner by split decision. Matt the Predator. Teddy, I'm sorry. You know with what's going on in boxing now, we've been having a tough time in the boxing world lately. This does not help. This stinks. And this comes once again in a state that abolished its commission. You know, once again, I ask for the good Senator John McCain, please come forward, help us, help us in this great sport. These noble warriors that get in the ring, help us get this sorted out. And as far as right now, any of those responsible commissions out there, take a look at those judges tonight that scored in 97-93 and 97-95 for Vanda and make it difficult for them to work anymore. Teddy, it was a wonderful evening, the excitement in the air, a good main event, a great crowd, a crowd that came out to enjoy a great fight night. But this leaves a bad taste. Matt Vanda celebrating a split decision win. He stays unbeaten, 30-0. Sam Gar, now three straight losses, 32-8. Brian and Max, I think you would agree with us there. Yeah, you know, it's a shame because this guy... Oh.